All right, the next drawing we're going to be doing is the connecting rod assembly. Um, again, you should have already previously done the scissor lift. Um, that should give you a good start as to how to um, not only begin an assembly file, but also how to do some concentric, coincident, and those type of mates. Um, we are going to add in a new mate today. Um, that's going to be this angle mate. Um, so please pay attention as we go through that. We will have another distance mate like we did last time. Um, but a lot of these things are going to be very similar or very familiar as we did um, in the scissor lift. So again, the first thing I want you to do, um, go to the assignment, um, go ahead and grab the, the files. There should be four files that you're going to go ahead and grab. I've gone ahead and uh, created a folder on my desktop and placed those files in that. So that folder um, is called connecting rod. So in that, oh, maybe I did, maybe I put it in my downloads. It's in my downloads. I lied there. So in my downloads, I have a, the wheel component, the base, the connecting block, and the rod. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Again, you're going to get all four of your parts. First thing you want to do is go ahead and pin that menu open. Um, we're going to go ahead and select just the base. And what do we do with the base? We don't just place it down because we want the origin to be in the exact location of the base origin. So we are going to hit the check mark. That places the part origin along with the assembly origin. Then we have the connecting rod itself. I got two of those. I have one connecting block and I have two wheel components. You'll notice the wheel components have a um, center line placed on them. That is for a reason because again, if you look at that drawing, we can see a vertical line here, which means this should be um, 90 degrees to this base um, or perpendicular and then we can see another one that's 20 degrees uh, inset here so we're going to use those two dimensions as we start putting this one together again as we're doing this you got to just think what touches what so we're going to mate we're going to do a couple concentric mates first so i'm going to zoom in here and go to the inside of this wheel touches the outside of that circle i'm going to do the same thing on the other side both those look good. Looking at this, I can also see that this wheel is flush with the end piece. So I'm going to select the face here and the face here, and that should bring that to flush. That's good. This should still be able to spin around pretty freely. Um, that shouldn't be impeded yet. Um, we're going to fix that here in just a second, but we're going to do the same thing on this side. So the face here, the face there, that's good. Um, I actually tend to move both these just slightly off just so I know I can place these exactly where I want them. I know this one is 90 degrees or perpendicular to this base and I know this one's 20 degrees inset. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this center line on this and I'm going to select this vertical line in the background. What that should do is should make it parallel which is true 90 degrees. Perfect. Check mark. That sets that in place. That one's no longer going to move. Okay, and that looks pretty good. This one over here, we want 20 degrees though. So we're gonna do the exact same process. So select the center line, select one of the verticals in the back. It doesn't matter which one, they're both the exact same. Then we're gonna hit angle, and we're gonna go ahead and set that angle. And again, it says 20 degrees, so we're gonna go ahead and set that at 20. Check mark in case it flipped on you. All you gotta do is hit this little flip button here. Um, it should be facing the right direction as long as you pull it over just a little bit. And that should work right there. All right, so this one's going pretty quickly here. So we're going to go ahead and mate these rods onto the wheel component. So what touches what? Well, the inside of this fits around that. Check mark. The inside of this fits around that. Check mark. So those look pretty good. And these can spin freely around here. That part won't really matter as far as your center of mass goes. I do want to kind of flip this one around to face a little bit this direction. It's not going to be perfect, but I do want it to face a little bit this way. That way when I do attach this, it makes that process a little bit easier. I don't have to move as many things around. The inside part of this connecting block will fit around the outside portion of this. And again, if I go back to this, you can clearly see that on the diagram check mark and then I'm going to do the same thing over here so I have the inside of that touches the outside of that now 
this should move perfectly along this. Now the other thing I could have done, I could have made these two parallel to each other. That does the exact same thing where it will line those two up, or I could just put that as a concentric mate on that circle. Either one of those is perfectly fine. Uh, I do like to, and this is not a required portion of this, I do like to go ahead and do a face to face mate right here and make these two perpendicular. Okay, the only reason I like to do that is because if I'm looking at it from the top view, this is completely flat to me. And again, if I'm going back to this view right here and I know I have 22 for my measurement, I kind of want that view. Um, if I don't do that, this is rotated just slightly and that in my brain annoys me. Um, it's not a deciding factor in the center of mass whatsoever, but it's just one of those things in my brain This I want it to be correct. So that's an extra step that I do. Again, it's not a required step whatsoever. Um, it's just a little OCD coming through here. But I do have a dimension of 22 that I need to put on. It is going from the back face of this piece to the inside face of this piece. So if I do that right now, that should be made it at zero. They're just touching. That should be zero distance in between them. I'm gonna go ahead and put a dis distance made in of 22. Check mark. And that is it for your connecting rod assembly. Again, you wanna make sure the origin is in the correct place on this one. And you can clearly see where the origin is on this one right here. It's in this back uh, corner of the base right here. If your origin, your assembly origin is not in that spot, you will get this part wrong. Good luck with this one.